Welcome to another episode of the Online Prosperity Experience Podcast. You're about to hear your host, Prosper Taravinga's powerful digital marketing strategies and actionable tactics that you can use right now. Prosper has helped more than 50,000 people from over 10 countries to create meaningful businesses that are profitable and enjoyable. Listen to this podcast so that you too can build your own business with less stress and overwhelm. Let's get started. Psst. Oi, what you're doing isn't marketing. <laughs> I'm definitely going to get my everything else handed to me by stating that what a lot of us coaches and consultants are doing is definitely not marketing. You see, I work with uh, coaches and consultants and recently I was just um, discussing a proposal that we sent out uh, to our prospective client who's a consultant. Um, he's actually an uh, engineering consultant um, and he's a CEO of a company and he was looking for a marketing agency to help him grow revenue for his business and obviously develop a more scalable customer acquisition process for his company's sales team. So I described our four stage process and if you haven't gotten an opportunity to get your hands on this process, just simply go to www.livelongdigital.com. Uh, dot com dot au forward slash blueprint all right and then you will see our four step uh process which we definitely use when we are onboarding our clients and also working towards getting a result so i described this process um you know when onboarding a new client and we diagnose the underlying issues um you know basically uh we want to di diagnose before we give any um um, you know, solutions because have you ever been to a doctor and you, then you just knock on his door and then he's like, yeah, come in. And then you walk in and then he just hands you uh, antibiotics before he even asks you how you're doing and what it is that could be going on. So we diagnose the underlying issues, why the customer has come to us. And then we understand the market space and obviously what the competition is doing in their space. Because with my experience, we've noticed that a lot of people don't quite know and understand what their competition is actually doing and what's actually working within their industry. And then we go on and develop a strategy and then putting together whatever tactical plan for us to deliver on that strategy. Now, our process is nothing particularly revolutionary um, because a few other agencies follow a similar plan in order to be able to, um, you know, help their clients um, receive their sales results. So at the end of my pitch, the guy just turned around and asked me, um, so Prosper, what ideas have you got in mind? What are we going to tackle first? Is it Facebook ads? Are we going to be doing videos or is it something else? And I replied that at this point, I, I don't know what tactics we're going to be using. You know, the tactical plan would have to become clear after, after we've actually um, looked at the insights that come out of, first of all, the diagnostics and then uh, second of all, the discovery phases. Um, and we need to have tangible information about the business, the customers, the competition, you know, what the industry before we're even able to formulate any plan um, that could be delivered on the business goals. And if you notice on our, um, you know, delivery template, you would notice that anything to do with tactics is on the third segment where, um, you know, we talk about conversions. All right. So, uh, I asked him a couple of basic questions about, you know, what is his positioning within the industry, you know, customer targeting, you know, has he identified the target market? Has he clarified his message? What is his product distribution? Um, you know, and what, what are the pricing? What, what sort of sales channels has he been using? What has worked and what hasn't worked? And you know what? His answer floored me. I was sitting on uh, my chair on a Zoom call, but I was like, whoa, and this guy is the CEO of this company. You know, he said that he didn't think that any of the questions that I asked him were relevant to what we were discussing. What the actual F? Like, seriously, to say that my heart sank would have been an understatement. Who doesn't know 
who their identified, um, you, you know, who their ideal target audience is and who doesn't know what the actual go-to-market message is. You know, a, lo a lack of board level marketing representation is maybe the bane of existence with a lot of businesses out there. You know, it's no wonder that the function is actually held at low regard, um, you know, th than most managers and business owners, um, you know, within their business. And whenever something goes wrong, marketing is the first to get a blame. And we never get accolades for making the business grow uh, when things are happening. And they think that marketing is just the tactical stuff, the Facebooks, um, you know, the tweets and everything else that comes along with it. That it's all just about ads or blogs or promotions or social media or whatever new shiny technology is that week's media darling. Well, yes, of course, marketing has had a bad rap, you know, and it includes all of the above. But it's so much more. In fact, that stuff doesn't even cover the most important items that every marketer should be aiming to contribute to the business. And that is what 90% of businesses still don't understand or even want to understand. <laughs> you know, during the course of my work, I speak to a lot of coaches and consultants and other small business owners pretty much on a daily basis. And with a few exceptions, most of them still confuse marketing with advertising or promotion or communications with public relations. And the danger moving forward is that the historic role of marketing as a component of a organization's strategic execution will disappear forever. We're all just going to be left with maybe cookie cutter campaigns that are producing mediocre returns and where marketing will get the blame for not producing the results that are needed when nobody's actually paying attention to what actual marketing is. And it's no wonder the life expectancy, if you go to any other established company, somebody who's a marketing director is between zero to 18 months because they're expected to just work on whatever uh, strategies that would have been left by the guy previously because at least when they then fired him, the marketing has started kicking in. With any strategy that we put out there, we give a minimum three months for it to actually start working. And it could be SEO, it could be AdWords or whatever it is, but... Hey, a lot of people ha do not have the patience at all to even wait until a website is fully uh, developed and it's fully functioning simply because they have no understanding or respect of the craft. Bruh. I mean, the inevitable response for many coaches and consultants is, um, you know, it's the board is just really focused on strategic issues rather than tactical ones. And since marketing efforts follow maybe company strategies, some of them assume that there's no point in having any representation at a board level or even having a marketing person within the industry because all they just want is an agency like me to just write out um, for them a strategy and then they can just give to one of their low level, um, you know, uh, employees to execute. Not only is such a thing dangerous, it is actually outdated because most of these things really need somebody with a finger on the pulse. Because let me tell you something. Maybe you could also be thinking the same, but marketing is so much more than just pretty pictures and tweets. Because you know what? Marketing brings the customer's voice to the table. Because when you have an understanding of who your target market is, you understand the people, the pain, and the actual payoff that your customers are looking for instead of listening to what your, your company is providing. Not only is it important for future products and sales strategy, but it actually brings the insights and recommendations of real world tangible, um, you know, feelings and the people that are actually bringing revenue to the marketplace, the customer. Because then when you don't understand customer lifetime value or the acquisition cost, then you wouldn't know what it costs for you to actually go and buy new customers for your business. Because moreover, more companies today are increasingly looking maybe to provide a more integrated customer experience, but they don't know who it is they're talking to. You need marketing to uncover and actually be part of the conversation that's happening in the customer's head already. So you want to break down all the internal uh, silos, you know, like IT, maybe sales, customer service, support, and even accounts. Because all of those functions won't function if you don't have a customer to serve.
You want to be able to deliver a more cohesive presentation to the customer. And how do you know who that customer is if you haven't been marketing and getting feedback from the actual real world market? I mean, it should be obvious that we, uh, you know, that having input from somebody who actually understands marketing at a strategic level has become even more crucial. You know why? I've put podcasts out there that talk about the attention span of every human is just dwindling and dwindling. And if you are not physically there to understand what the customer's needs, pains and payoffs and what solution they're actually looking for, grand opening, grand closing. I mean, sure, that means marketers need to step up in the game and maybe start talking the language of finance, but that's not our job. But it also means the company boards also need to acknowledge marketing as a strategic role in the bigger picture and actually demonstrate it at, at putting, um, you know, real people within a marketing department. I mean, obviously saying this will take away my job if people had CMOs in place, um, you know, looking after their marketing. But the fact that marketing is usually something that is an afterthought, whoa, you're missing out on having the customer have an input in actually growing your business. You know why? People will support a cause or business that they helped to build. So you want to have a strategy and then maybe deal with the tactics a whole lot later because if you've identified your target market and you've clarified your message, it's super, super easy to determine what media you're going to be reaching out your audience to because you can always take whatever message you have to find the target market in any different social media outlet that's out there. So strategy comes first, tactics come later. Because today's tactical, you know, invariably technology-based distractions get all the headlines. You know what? People are always looking for that magic pill. And tech um, and, 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 you know, technology or some sort of innovation such as maybe virtual reality, augmented reality, artificial intelligence, they definitely are missing the entire point. You can never download a hug. And guess what? A lot of people out there, a lot of our customers are just simply looking for somebody who can help them solve their problems. They're not looking for the next whiz bang technology to mesmerize them when they come and reach at your website and be taken back and forth and see things that they never saw before. All they just want to know is, am I going to fit in my wedding dress when the day arrives? Am I going to be able to connect with my daughter when she comes back from school where does ai fit into the whole hugging and kissing process i mean real marketing real marketing is firstly about having a deep and fundamental understanding of your customer and then after that it's always about coming up with whatever strategy designed to aid your business to increase sales in the market that you're in I mean, obviously, sexy bells and whistles are, of course, an essential part of the route to success. You know why? People are used to it in, in, in different marketings, but they're not where you should actually begin. And they're certainly not the most important part. So no wonder so many businesses come to us complaining about their marketing, that it's not working or they're not reaching their goals because they start, they don't start with the end in sight. They just find out what their competition is doing and then just go after that. And they don't quite realize the, you know, the whole ingredients that go um, into creating the cake that they just are marveling from a shop window. Far too much attention is spent on what I consider promotion ads or tactics. You know what I mean? But that's not the stuff that generates sales. The people who have blood in their veins, who've got soccer practices at 3 p.m. Uh, to pick their little kid to, and then take them to swimming lessons. Those are the people that are raising up their hands with their credit cards and saying, hey, we would like to give you a try with your products or your services. That's the kind of stuff that marketing does to uncover the needs um, of the people and the actual people that it's going out to by identifying the target market. No wonder your marketing is not working. Because if a marketing team spends all their time buying branded stress balls or wrestling at trade show booth, you know, uh, uh, with people that <laughs> you've got no one but yourself to blame. 
because stress, stress balls are not going to eliminate your client's stress. Do you know what you don't know? Because everything starts and ends with the customer. If you're not regularly talking to your customers, you're assuming that your marketing efforts are working, um, you know, but they're not. You're probably missing out on a ton of possible sales and referrals. And you're never going to know. Man, it's not about deciding how big your logo should be printed on a, on a tote bag or on stickers that you're going to be giving out at a trade show. They are much more important uh, things that you need to figure out. Why is your customer buying your product? Why is your customer engaging with your consulting? Why are they engaging with your training? Why are they downloading your information and seeking out your expertise? What problem does it actually solve for them? Is it the same problem last year or has it changed due to the pandemic? Because that's another issue. We are going towards a jaded customer who no longer receives information the way they used to before. So does that mean that your product isn't well suited or does it even make it better? Have you even figured out if the uh, pandemic has actually aided you or it has actually taken off a few aspects of your business that no longer are needed? How are your existing customers different from the new ones? Are we even taking, a, you know, like a, a yardstick to really, really take a temperature check? Or are we just doing that so that we pass COVID restrictions? And about the service or the product itself, does the features, the color, the size, or the length of the videos, or maybe the consulting, is that still suited to what your customers are looking for, are they? Are you still maybe waiting to shake hands with customers that no longer want to touch people just because they're afraid of germs? What will be the sales impact of, um, you know, if you made certain features available online only and some may be paid or included optional from what you used to offer before? And best of all, why are some customers canceling or why are they going to the competition and rather than buying from you? When was the last time you looked at your pricing? Not just about saying my coaching or consulting costs $30 or whatever it is based on the calculation that you made looking at your mortgage. You know? Do you know how many potentials you could, uh, uh, customers you could actually lose or even gain by simply changing your pricing? When was the last time you actually looked at the margin you, you give to your resellers or redistributors or maybe your affiliates? Talking about distribution, how easy is it for customers to actually find your product or to find your services or for them to book a consultation with you? How easy is it for them to buy from you or maybe make returns? And how long does it take for an order to be delivered? Or how long does it take for you uh, from the time somebody books a consultation with you to the time you actually sit down with them on a Zoom meeting or in person? And if you're selling online, how easy is it for customers to find what they're looking for on your website? For that reason alone, people might just be abandoning your business simply because it's just in the too hot basket. Before the pandemic, we could meet people, kiss babies and, you know, uh, talk to people in person. But now a lot of things have started happening digitally. So you want to start thinking, um, you know, in, in the sense, are you actually reaching out to your audience in the, in, in the spaces that they have now hibernated to? Don't forget that our people, our customers were in quarantine for quite a while and they could make do with whatever they could make do with. You know, there's a trend for every, um, you know, there's a trend for every answer to be a digital one. And, and, and maybe people are really looking to connect more because they didn't have that connection before. Do you know those answers? Because a lot of thinkers have been replaced by makers. All right. People were making stuff during quarantine. Um, there's a lot of, um, you know, China is making products out there, but people now want to connect with, with ideas. Because world-class communication experience has given way to mediocre digital experiences. But all of this, you know, data analytics, uh, March tech, chatbots, 
targeted ads in a word won't even matter if your call message falls flat on its face. No amount of ad retargeting or marketing automation will make up for, you know, your positioning looking the same as the competition. How are you differentiating yourself out there by proving that you can help your customers by actually helping them? And if you don't know how to speak to people in a way that actually triggers an emotion and, and makes them want to do business with you, then whatever tech skills or tech you have on your website or whiz bang stuff, it don't matter. And like I keep saying, whatever you think you're doing in terms of marketing, that ain't marketing, bro. And I'm saying bra here, it's a figurative speech. I don't want you to have your knickers up in a bunch saying, you know, I'm being sexist. It's no wonder that in most markets, there's a pervading feeling of me too, sameness. You know what I mean? Competitors look virtually identical. If you look at your website, if you remove your logo, would that be any different to yet another mortgage broker out there, to yet another coach out there? Or are you just waxing lyrical to the same thing that the whole market is saying? What is different about you today? There's a lack of boldness. There's a lack of differentiation. There's a lack of creativity. Everybody's just riding the same horse. What's missing is originality, authenticity, and I dare say it, even honesty. You know why? Because a lot of people lost their jobs and... Now they're just jumping on just because they got a laptop and an and internet connection, calling themselves a cultural consultant out there. And I, 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 it's sad to say marketing has never been more disliked than today. Because back in the time it used to be Jehovah's Witnesses or, or salespeople. Now it's marketers. How come? It's because most of it has just become generic and vanilla. I mean, look at a margarita pizza. <laughs> My wife is Italian, you know, and she just makes a margarita for the kids. It's, it's contributing to the noise, not the signal. Why is that? Because no one has done their homework. That's why everybody's just following best practices and they don't know what makes a customer uh, tick. Marketers are asked to sell products with little differentiation. And there's a lot of drop shipping out there. People are not even wanting to actually, you know, be accountable for the stuff that they're putting in, um, you know, people's hands. In an already overcrowded marketplace, you know, you, you, we're delivering results in five minutes flat to a tenor. And it's now the, the tenor round of um, if I put an ad out there and if nobody clicks on it, then that uh, uh, campaign has failed. You know? There's consumers over the age of 50 who have more buying power than any other demography right now. Yet, precious few marketers address them effectively. And most marketing is, is you know, to, to over 50s fails because it's been put together by somebody who's under 30 who has no emotional intelligence to reach to that kind of audience. How can you sell insurance to people that don't even know what a risk is? I mean, we can support something that's been written by somebody who's young from a mile away. And it actually affects the brand's perception because you're not in the customer's mind and you're not having the same conversation as the customer. I mean, we've been your age, but you haven't been our age. All right? Because businesses are thinking that all customers are the same. You know, when they've never been more varied. There has been a difference in marketing between, um, you know, Melbourne, Sydney, compared to the marketing that's happening in New York or in Canberra. It can't all be the same. Maybe in those areas, they had a longer lockdown than we did. And there was a different communication aspect that people are now receptive to. So rather than building a brand over time, everything now just cycles around quarterly sales figures. And the result is just a fixation on short-term gains that can't be sustained. Everyone wants the single, but no one wants to buy the whole album. So that's why I keep saying what you're doing is in marketing. I mean, tactics may get all the love, but at the end of the, of the hard work done beforehand, that actually defines what succeeds and what actually fails. Marketing is about solving business problems. Firstly, that implies an understanding of the business, uh, a, a far rarer trait in marketers than it should be. 
but it also means understanding the business, the revenue, the cash flow, ba balance sheet, profitability, well enough to make strategic decisions that will actually then drive tactical execution. And most marketers and most coaches and consultants, they have no clue about the inner workings of the businesses that they actually are in. They just want to post yet another pretty picture on Instagram. And that's not marketing. Because putting all your attention on tactics may keep you busy. And you may even get a few quick wins here and there. But with that deep and fundamental understanding of segmentation, influence, and behavior, you'll always be fighting with that one hand tied behind your back. I really want you to win. You know what I mean? So that's the reason why if you schedule a, 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 a consultation with us, I'll show you how to get high ticket leads on autopilot using our online prosperity method. And it's just a simple system that we've developed by really throwing away the stale marketers rule book and adopting cutting edge, um, you know, approaches, which basically have been working forever. You know, and this can be adopted to any business instead of you just putting stuff out there and hoping that it would stick. So if you're a coach or consultant and you're looking uh, to grow your business, I mean, I, I can understand marketing is just one aspect of running a successful business. You know, you go from hiring new staff, balancing the books and driving growth and more. And it just feels like a constant balancing act where you're pulled in multiple different directions all at once. At the end of the day, your real goal is to help your clients, but you can't help them if you don't know who they are. You can't help them if you haven't clarified your message. You can't help them if you haven't been able to reach out to them. And I can understand, you don't want to spend countless hours each week trying to navigate the complex world of online marketing. And you certainly don't have to if you establish the strategy that you really want to follow and then follow it to a T. I'm more than happy to have a look at what you've been creating so far because I really want that this year be the year that you literally start getting paid and earning more money with less struggle. Most of us are, you know, really struggling to get leads simply because we haven't really defined our target audience. We haven't clarified our message and that's just the basics. And most of the things that a lot of people fail at are usually the basics. I really want to see you succeed. You see, here we go. I'm already, um, you know, giving you a standing of ovation because you know you've got what it takes to actually win at this game of business. All right. So stop playing with yourself. Whatever it is that you've been doing, uh, the whole busyness of being busy around Facebook and social media, that might not be marketing. And I want you to win. Bye for now. Thank you for joining us today. If you have any questions, let's continue the conversation in the Live Long Digital community. Become a Live Long Digital community member today. This community is for ambitious entrepreneurs and small business owners with the drive to take control of the future of their businesses and achieve huge success without stress and overwhelm. As you heard, Prosper can help you by teaching you marketing strategies that work. So look no further than the Live Long Digital community of entrepreneurs and highly successful business owners. Join our community today. Find us on www.community.livelongdigital.com.au. Network with other driven entrepreneurs and find the expert guidance you need to take your business to the next level. www.community.livelongdigital.com.au.